Yes, uh, the president go. also used his speech to call out moderate Democratic senators Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema. While he didn't mention them by name, here's what he said when explaining why Congress has not passed more of his agenda. In June should be a month of action on Capitol Hill. I hear all the folks on TV saying, why doesn't Biden get this done? Well, because Biden only has a majority of effectively four votes in the House and a tie in the Senate with two members of the Senate who vote more with my Republican friends. But we're not giving up. While Senators Manchin and Sinema have both opposed eliminating the filibuster, both have voted with President Biden 100 percent of the time, according to 538. That's, that's pretty, a that's, higher rating that's than pretty, pretty progressive good. Senators Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, to give you a little context. So was he attacking Bernie and Elizabeth? What's going on? There you go. Plot twist. I mean, it, it's got to be, though, it's got to be really frustrating at this point um, because, you know, Willie, you, you take the commission, the January 6th commission, that's kind of low-hanging fruit Yeah, for, for 10 Republicans to, to, to sign on to. Sort of thing they would have signed on to at any point in this country's history, I think, at least in our lifetimes. Uh, but not now, because <clears throat> they don't want people to hear the truth about Donald Trump. And then infrastructure. Infrastructure, you know, I, I was trying to explain to somebody yesterday, like, that was the one bill that went when small group of us were constantly pushing to cut spending, cut spending, cut spending, we usually did pretty well picking up other people. You get to transportation and everybody would roll over you because they all wanted a bridge in their district. They all wanted, you know, whatever money, money for whatever infrastructure project they wanted. And so infrastructure should be easy. That's the one thing Republicans and Democrats always come together with. If they can't get 10 Republicans on an infrastructure bill, it's just not going to happen. Well, they're not going to get 10 Republicans on the infrastructure bill as they've proposed it, as the White House has proposed it. Republicans have come back with almost a billion dollar counteroffer and they say this is strategically and strictly about infrastructure, not about some of the other stuff they think is extraneous. Um, but this is about the filibuster. I mean, Joe Biden calling out Joe Manchin, who has said again and again and again to the point where yesterday he said, guys, you can keep asking me about the filibuster, but I'm not going to change my answer. We need to keep mm -hmm. the filibuster. So. Joe Biden and progressive Democrats are trying to put downward pressure on cinema and Manchin to say, hey, I need you to blow through the filibuster if we're going to get a bunch of our stuff through, including infrastructure, including voting rights. No. And Joe Manchin has said, I'm not doing it. Well, they have one seat in New Mexico. Uh, Democrats will hold on to the New Mexico seat uh, that was vacated by Interior Secretary Deb Haaland. State Representative Melanie Stansberry prevailed in a four-way race, easily defeating her closest challenger, Republican Mark Moores, in yesterday's special election to represent New Mexico's first congressional district. Stansberry campaigned on the Biden agenda and captured 60 percent of the vote. Her win shores up the narrow Democratic House majority heading into the midterm. So, Jonathan, this was, this was a must win for Democrats. Republicans were thinking if they won this thing, then, boy, it would be a sign that there was going to be just bleeding uh, in, in 2022 uh, for the Democratic Party. But they held on and, and held on pretty comfortably. Yeah, they did. And a candidate who allied herself with Joe Biden's agenda. It's a light blue state, New Mexico. And it would have been an incredible warning sign for the Democrats were they to lose that. I mean, we know the historic trends that the, the party that does not have the White House tends to pick up seats in the off-year elections. We know the GOP feels pretty confident about 2022, particularly in the House. And if they had picked off this one early, that would have been a great sign for uh, them. And let's remember, that Democratic margin is so narrow. We keep talking about the 50-50 tie in the Senate. Democrats only have a handful of seats, edge in the House. So that's, a, that's an issue there, too. But at least here, that's, that's a victory, one the Democrats were confident they'd get. And they did. They feel yeah. better about it. And now they have to, you know, obviously play defense for all the seats coming in 22. Yeah. Hey, Rev, let me ask you something about it, going back to the filibuster, because it's a question that I get more often than not. I you just got to say, rank and file Americans, like, I, I've just never heard them come up to me and talk about procedure. You know, people that watch this show, people that watch cable news, people that are, like, are really focused on politics. Maybe they know about filibuster, but for 90 percent of Americans, like, do they even care about the filibuster? Because people go, oh, Joe Manchin's getting all of this, well, these political points in West Virginia for pushing back on the filibuster. No, I, I think the average think American so. doesn't understand, uh, don't have, does not have knowledge. And there's really not been a national 
uh, kind of campaign to the public about the filibuster. This has all been inside Beltway politics. But it does impact a lot. And I think that we're going to see between infrastructure and the George Floyd bill and the voting bill, a real reckoning of how we deal with this. You know, Mark Morial, president of the Urban League, and I traveled together yesterday, and he's arranged for some of us to meet with Manchin to talk about some of these bills. So there's going to be attempts to try and deal with this one way or another because they're real lives that are impacted. But I think the president, by calling them out yesterday, puts pressure from the top. The question is whether something uh, starts brewing from the bottom, but I think until that happens, you're right. The average person just feels the Congress is either getting things done or not getting things done. They have no idea what a filibuster well, and, is. And, and, they're not, and, and that's a problem. I, I, I understand um, I'm sort of an institutionalist. I wouldn't want the filibuster to be gone. I like tradition. Uh, in, in the Senate, I don't want things to move really quickly. I, you know, I said last year, yeah, you, know, you can change the number of Supreme Court because everybody says, oh, it's unconstitutional. You can move it at 12, you can move it at 20. I don't want that to happen. But constitutionally, it can be done. But in the case of the filibuster, Willie, it seems to me that we have a choice. I mean, we can either have um, the Senate institution, uh, some of these procedures that have been in place for, for quite some time protected, or we can actually have a branch of government protected, which really can't get anything done. You look at the last six years of Barack Obama's presidency, next to nothing got done because Republicans wouldn't pass anything. Please, somebody tell me the biggest, la what landmark bill did Barack Obama pass the last six years? Nothing, because they shut him down. And now the last four years, Trump had his tax cut. That's about it. I mean, that's about it. So this Senate doesn't work. Congress doesn't work. It doesn't pass big legislation anymore. Americans don't have a choice. That's why Republicans win one year, Democrats win two years later. Republicans win two years later, Democrats win two years later. At some point, give the American people the choice. If Democrats want to go big, much bigger than I'd want to go, but if they want to go big, then go big and give Americans that very clear choice, which you can't get when nothing ever gets passed. That's exactly the argument made by Democrats in the Senate, uh, progressives who've said, look, the choice is we can preserve this institution called the filibuster, or we can get better on voting rights, or we can have a January 6th commission, or we can do, you know, the list goes on and on and on for people saying, Jonathan, look, we can sit here and we can have this gridlock and we can wring our hands and we can try to convince Joe Manchin to go one way or the other. But we're not getting anything done. And so the question will be, are they willing to strip away an institution, the filibuster, to get through their big agenda? And Joe Biden, excuse me, Joe Manchin so far has said no.